Hey guys, it's CCD. So what you're seeing in front of you right now is my newest plant purchase. It's a Begonia Rex. Um, it actually says that it's a Begonia Plum Paisley, but um, all the pictures on the internet seem to indicate otherwise. Anyway, as you can see, it's quite affordable at only 18 bucks. Uh, I actually got it for an additional 30% off um, from Bar Botanic. If you know anything about the begonias, like I just started researching them, they actually like humidity. Oh look, it's a new leaf. Um, there are a couple leaves on here with with brown tips. And I think a lot of this is to do with humidity levels. Apparently this plant needs a fair bit of humidity too. This is the White Princess. Um, and this other Monstera possibly needs more humidity. A very obvious case of needing humidity is from my Clethia Mosaica. As you can see from these tips here. I tried to put on a pebble tray, but I noticed that there were insects breeding in it and thought it was kind of gross, so I let it dry out for now. I also have a humidity reader in my room, and um, it's currently sitting at 46% relative humidity. This sort of humidity reading is quite normal. It's generally speaking in the 40s, and I believe that this is a huge contributor to um, why my houseplants are getting brown tips. It's gone to a point where I want to invest in something that can increase the humidity, preferably in a passive manner because I normally work in a country town, so not actually in this environment. Um, and so I started looking at greenhouses. This is a really cheap greenhouse you could buy from Bunnings. It actually comes with a plastic covering that you can zip open and close. It's relatively inexpensive at 50 bucks. My parents actually really like it because they were going to build a plant shelf and the cost of the materials would have come close to 300, but they only bought this one for 50. When we first got this, mum um, decided to put all of my wedding orchids into it and chuck it outside and under the sun. So it got very hot and all the orchids burnt. This was the first alternative, rather the first greenhouse possibility that I was looking at. But I feel like, um, especially when the plastic is on, it looks very tacky. It's a bit of an eyesore. I didn't really want that in my room. I actually went out and bought the Millsbow, which is a glass display cabinet from Ikea. So I chose this one because um, it's got a fair bit of glass to it, so it should let a lot of light in and yet not let the humidity escape. But also, if it doesn't work out for my plants, um, I can always use it as its intended purpose, which is as a display cabinet. The Millsville actually comes in two packs. The first pack is quite long and very heavy. The second pack is a lot shorter but still just as heavy. I also went off and bought um, one of the products from IKEA's integrating uh, integrated light systems, which is the Stromlinch. So it's actually meant for in use in your kitchen, but um, I hope this will work with this uh, with this cabinet. And to help power the Stromlinch, I also bought an an slutter. And it's out of the pack because I actually opened it up in store. There were, there were no um, IKEA workers around to help assist with this. So um, I kind of put it together in store to make sure that the light actually turns on, which it does. But because of that, <laughs> the power supply is not in with the pack anymore. And also I couldn't um, completely close this because once I put this in, once I connected this cable, I couldn't really like take it out without hurting the uh, plastic on here. But you know, if I had taken more time, you could actually put it on this side or on this side, whichever side um, fits your need better. Um, I also have with me my handy dandy screwdriver pocket tool, but I've also <laughs> borrowed 
my husband's toolkit. <clears throat> Super tool. So I'm going to put this uh, shelf together, attach the lighting, and try and put the lights and humidity reader and all the plants in it. And hopefully it'll work out well. But yeah, this is my current plant situation. Yeah, I really love the colours. Um, my husband encouraged me to buy this because um, <laughs> if you notice, most of my plants are actually green or green on green. So just to add that pop of colour and hopefully I don't kill this begonia. The last one I killed was like four years ago. So we'll see if I've overcome my fear and um, maybe improve my growing ability since then. Who knows? I just realized that uh, before I built the Millspo, I should actually decide um, where I want it because it's quite heavy. So I've got a couple of options. I was thinking of putting it between my, between my um, wardrobe and my bathroom in this section. However, I don't think it gets that much light. Okay, so sorry, here's the light situation. Um, so I've got a north facing window and being from the southern hemisphere, this is quite strong light. Um, it's a bit of overcast at the moment, so I've um, actually pulled my sheer curtains back. But um, I've been growing my plants quite close to this and then having the shears in front of it to just so that um, it stops them from burning. The decision has been made for me. It's going to be against this wall. I've spruced up my workspace, so I've actually left three plants kind of near my desk sort of area and um, that is the Ficus Elastica Marble and the Ficus Elastica Ruby, both of which need um, a lot of light and also the Monstera. And um, the reason for this is because, well, they need more light, they, um, I don't think they'll do so well being, you know, four meters away from the window. So I've, I've kept them to about one, well, not even one, but it's, you know, I can adjust it. And this is the mess. There's a lot of packaging that comes in with these, um, these flat pack furniture type things. And I've rearranged my setup again. So I've put the skin depths as pictures, um, on the right hand side and the I've got a a very tiny golden pothos well I've kind of mixed it with a neon as well I've got it just on on that side to kind of balance it out um, some of the plants that I've got in here that uh, I definitely want in here due to humidity reasons you know it's the philodendron white princess I've got that down the bottom because of that pot is really heavy so if I'm gonna have it in there, it's gotta be in that bottom level. And this is the one I really wanted in in here, and that's my Clethea mosaica, and also these two. So this is the begonia, begonia rex. Sorry for the. Here you go. And that's the begonia rex, and also the monstera adansonii. It's been an hour since I set this all up, 
And uh, as you can see, temperature is roughly the same at 27.5 degrees. But the relative humidity, holy shit, that's like almost double 70 now. And I think it normally sits around 40 to 45-ish. So yeah, that is my beautiful setup. Oh, and let's turn on the light. And there it is. So the light's pretty cool. You can actually add more lights if you want. Um, if we look at the, I think it was called the Enslata, which is basically the power. Um, you can actually add up to six lights as long as it doesn't exceed the total um, watts, which I can't remember what the total watts are. I think it might be something like 30 or something. I don't know. I have to go find that sheet. Here we go. The Enslata. Nineteen watts, so nineteen max, and I'm pretty sure that one there, which is the Strom Lynch or whatever it's called, I think that was eight. So basically, if I use that same light back, I could probably have two in here, despite there being six slots. And yes, I need to do a bit of cable management in that corner, but yeah. Um, otherwise. I do have this other light. I don't know if Google will work while I'm filming. One sec. Okay, Google. Turn the grow light on. Oh, yeah, boy. And yes, I know I need a pot for this begonia. I'm sure it will happen one day. Don't you worry. And so, that is my new bedroom greenhouse setup, I guess. <laughs> I'm really pleased with the results. I really like it. I really like my setup. My little home office is looking so gorgeous. So I just wanted to go through some of my learnings from today's activity. Um, firstly, you build the legs, so you put the screws on. They're like little tum tacky type things. And basically, the, that's what's in contact with the ground. Um, so the first advice I have is to not screw these in too tightly, especially at the start. So the problem that I had was um, at the start of it, I was, you know, uh, full of energy, I was rearing to go, I screwed it on super tight and then I had a problem later on trying to um, unscrew it and that's because uh, you unscrew it because it's um, basically what you use for height adjustment. Yeah, this step, oh my goodness, okay, step 11. I did not see what the sign was but basically you put the screws in but you do not tighten it and uh, this caused a lot of problems for us um, in the next few steps, which was when you put in the glass. From step 13 onwards, this, because we tightened it, this caused us issues. We did loosen it, probably not as much as we should have. Let's slide the glass onto the rubber bit, not the lump, but we couldn't get it um, in. We couldn't get it between the little lumps and the rubber pad. And the reason is because we had this screwed on way too tight, so there wasn't any give to the the top part of the Millsbow cabinet. You've got these little support things. So they kind of hold the glass panel to the metal frame, but they also hold the glass shelving up. So you've got to pick where you want it based on the height of your plant. So that's actually one where we didn't make a mistake and we foresaw that. So that was really good. And after you put in the panels, um, every panel except for the doors, then, then you can screw the top bits on tighter. By the time we kind of adjusted and then got to here, we were like, hang on, didn't we already tighten those? And yeah, so that was a huge, huge, huge learning on our part. So um, 
it's kind of like a manual lock like it doesn't really lock it you gotta you've got to push down this nub to push out this uh, metal plate to hold the door into place for one of the doors um, but the thing the word of caution with this piece is you have uh, two screws and it was the bottom screw the bit closest to the metal plate when we screw that in um, it actually bent this oval thing like the screw kind of pulled it inwards so it kind of deformed it so you know if you're screwing in that that part don't screw it in too tightly and when we attached the doors we realized that um, the, the top of the doors weren't aligning they were kind of like this and um, the way to fix that is explained later but basically the screws that you put on in step one they that's the feet you adjust the height of it and the doors kind of loosely suspended there so by changing the feet you kind of change the the height of the door and how they align <laughs> this key was really weird like I was saying before um, this this door here the one on the left you kind of have to push the the plate down and up into the there's like two little slots here to hold it in I didn't know that at first I thought it was like a fully you know working mechanism that works together with the key but it's not so when I first tried it I closed the doors and then I turned the key and it it, it puts a plate out this way um, but because it's just one plate you can just open the door and close the door with that plate hanging out so yeah, you actually have to close the left door first, push this plate and this plate up and down, and then close this right hand door and lock it for it to actually be locked. Honestly, I have no reason to keep my cabinet locked. And lastly, the you can buy optional lights. So what they've got here is actually like two round lights, which is probably smarter because um, there are two holes up here which is used for wiring basically so they've got two two holes and they put in two lights so that it's even um, for me I had a I didn't I didn't realize there were holes there so I put in a straight bar just because I like the look of the of the bar light better um, and then I had to kind of like fiddle with the wire to tidy up that cable management um, behind the whole cabinet frame. So even though my light worked, this way would have been easier, but I do like how mine looked in the end. My parents are also making their own greenhouse. I've put in a jug of water to help with the humidity. And overnight, this number is just insane, 94%. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.